Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review where I share some life lessons out of the books that I read. Most of these books are library books, some of them are second-hand books and this time round I do have a library book and it was with pleasure that I stumbled upon the writing of John Fante. For those Charles Bukowski fans out there, you probably know who this guy is. I didn't. I had no idea who he was. And yet I was pleasantly surprised by his writing. Not as scathing as Bukowski, but somehow very similar in the style. I love this book, but I didn't like the character. The character he, we get introduced to in Ask the Dust is Arturio Bandini. And a name like that seems to put in our head someone who is larger than life, bigger than Ben-Hur, a magician of sorts, wonderful with women. Just everyone loves Arturio Bandini. But what it is well Arturio Bandini this 22 year old in this book seems to think that way that's in his head he's actually comes across as a sad character well sad to me I'll uh, explain why so we're introduced to this 22 year old who is in Los Angeles and he wants to be a writer he's left home for the first time he's a young Catholic boy he's got his typewriter he's living in hotels pretty seedy hotels pretty cheap hotels and he's desperate to make ends meet. He's really, really poor. All he can afford is some oranges and whatever he can scrounge around. But every so often he writes a story that gets published by his editor who he holds in really high esteem, like a god in fact, by the name of Huckmuth. And he keeps talking to Huckmuth, like it swaps and changes first and third person because Arturio himself seems to big note himself and sometimes he talks a third person, sometimes he talks in first person, but ultimately Arturio is in his head someone who is famous, someone who wants to be famous, someone who really wants to make an impact to others. In actual fact he is Holden Caulfield grown up as a 22 year old. Arturio goes into a cafe and he sees this woman Camilla, Camilla Lombard or Camilla Lopez and herein is one of my life lessons with regards to the naming of these characters. Camilla also comes from a similar background to him. She's also poor. She's not Italian but she comes from some kind of Mexican background and he puts her down and he keeps putting her down and yet at the same time he really wants to impress her. So he gives her his article and she rips it up and he gets really frustrated. They have this really love-hate relationship. It is a very bizarre relationship. But for all those of us who can really glean and understand what's behind the scene, you kind of start to realise that something's not quite right with Camilla. The answer comes out right towards the end, which I don't want to spoil here. Arturio is desperate, desperate to become seen, to be known, to become famous as a writer. He feels that his editor, Huckmuth, is the only person who can really understand him. And yet he feels at times that he also does a disservice to his mother. He's got this big guilt aspect. And I think this guilt comes from the fact that he's Catholic, that he's trying to make something of himself, that he's failing his mother of sorts when he has to write home to her and lie to her about uh, not being successful and also asking for money. There's a lot of themes in this book that are probably indicative of the times of 1930s LA, people being in a situation where there was the depression, there they're basically trying to make something of themselves. And if you come from a background that is non-American, non-white, non-Anglo-Saxon, they have something that they wanna prove. Everyone is in LA to kind of prove to themselves they can be someone. And I feel that uh, Arturio Bandini here is desperate to be seen, is desperate to be someone. Now I mentioned something about the names. There was Camilla Lombard, who she called herself Lombard. Her name was really Lopez. And I started to think to myself, when I first started reading about this book, I had to chuckle with her name Arturio Bandini. And there was a bit of cynicism to him when I started reading this book. And I thought, Arturio, Arturio, what are you doing? It's 1930s LA. You're in a situation where your name is going to hold you back. I thought to myself, you know, isn't it sad that you have to think that way? In order for you to be successful, you really have to change your identity because no one's going to take you seriously 
as an Italian Catholic, especially in the 1930s. The situation here was really interesting because I wasn't aware that in 1933, LA experienced one of the worst earthquakes, about 120 people dying. In this book, he mentions that earthquake. So that was a life lesson for me. Another lesson for me was Riley, I had to kind of think he, he got frustrated with what was happening in the uh, newspapers at the time about the rise of Germany, about the rise of Hitler, and he would just fob it off saying, you know, who wants to hear about Hitler? That's nothing. And I do wonder, given that it was published in 1939, maybe this was the time where the author, Fanti, also was probably doing the same thing. You know, people probably didn't understand what was going to happen in just a few years time after this book was written. This book has a lot of, uh, I guess, life lessons and themes for me to really try and understand and try to pull out. What I saw in Arturio was someone who was desperate to find a home. His home was in LA, in America, and he was always saying that he was proud to be American. And yet at the same time, he kept his Italianness about him. He had this disdain for others. He had this disdain for others who were non-Anglo-Saxon, non-American. And I think sometimes this disdain came out of his hate for Camilla. He didn't really know himself. And I think that came from the fact that he was a young man who was desperate, I think, to try and get rid of his virginity. He came across as worldly and yet he wasn't to the reader for those worldly readers out there who have lived a life could read through this and saying he's simply a young man he's simply a an impetuous youth trying to big note himself trying to be recognized but he's not yet experienced in, in the world he self-contradicts himself he on the one hand he thinks he's bigger than ben-hur but on the other hand he's very poor he's also innocent and naive in the way he approaches things. I think he's desperate to try and be seen and he's desperate to kind of be like a, be more mature, but he comes across as being really childish. Ultimately, I, I feel as if he's desperate to be seen as an artist. He's desperate to make some kind of profound impact in the world. And yet he doesn't have the worldly experiences in his life and he's desperate to try and find these what these experiences are. He's hugely, hugely guilt, guilty. Guilty of being seen by his mother and obviously that Catholic guilt of being able to repent for his sins. He, he does things and then yet he swaps and changes his mind. He'll go with a prostitute and then he'll repent for that sell an article or sell a story to a magazine and he gets a lot of money and then he goes wild spending it and then he comes becomes poor again he 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 constantly changes his mind i feel he's not comfortable in his own skin and i think it's simply because of youth he's just a young man exploring he's 22 years old just think of our, ourselves when we were at 20 21 22 we had the world ahead of us we thought we knew what we wanted in our life he's got a bit of hero worship too with his editor huck huckmuth and I, I think that that's funny too, because also in our 20s, we all had our own heroes. To him, it was his editor, because his editor could also see his genius in his writing. There's a lot of poverty here in this book, and the poverty was seen by the fact that he really wants to make something for himself, and the fact that he also doesn't know how to manage his finances. He publishes a, a story, and then he gets very excited, he gets paid quite a lot, and money just seems to slip through his fingers. He's also someone who wants to be validated. He carries around in his briefcase copies, autographed copies of the stories that he had published, but he can't find anyone who really gives him that kudos or gives him that recognition, that, that acknowledgement. The only acknowledgement he ever got was from a young 14-year-old girl earlier on in his life that he talks about by the name of Judy Palmer, who loved his story and all he wanted to do was, I guess, get her adulation even 
<laughs> to get her adulation and revel in, it, in her adulation much to the annoyance of her mother. What we, we come across is a very similar theme to I guess the catcher in the rye of the Holden Caulfield character but imagine Holden Caulfield grown and he doesn't have a sister but he has someone who is similar to the age of the sister of uh, the catcher in the rye <laughs> who loves and adores him and he can't find anyone else and he's desperate to try and find that with people. Certainly the woman that he's with who has problems of her own doesn't give him that and he's frustrated with it. He doesn't know how to react to her. He's constantly fighting with her, he's fighting with himself, he's fighting with others and yet I think all he wants to do is to be a writer, to immerse himself in experiences, to write and to have his editor publish those stories so that he become he can become famous. The famous Arturo Bandini. Everyone knows Arturo Bandini. He doesn't want to be known in his head. He wants other people to know who he is and what he stands for. I love this book. Very interesting book. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Please let me know what you thought of Arturo Bandini. What are the life lessons that you got out of this story? If you are a Charles Bukowski fan, how does it compare to the writing of Charles Bukowski? What are some other fantasy books that uh, you would recommend? Ultimately, I think the biggest life lesson here is you need to grow a bit. You can have youthful fancies. Anyway, that is it for me. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye for now.